Secretary General, thank you very much for your time. A pleasure. I need a couple of tips from you. It's not an interview, it's a collection of advice. I'm here for advice. I represent the Global Energy Association, $540,000 per year, a prize awarded by an international committee. We have tripled all the figures in this last year. There were 12 countries that participated in the nomination process, now there are 36. There were 39 postulations, now there are 94. Only two from Latin America, though, Uruguay and Mexico. Now, nominations are perhaps a bit difficult. In the traditional energy category, on at least a couple of occasions, the winners were Nobel Prize winners. In the non-conventional energy, the most important research centers are perhaps in Europe and in the United States. But our third category, the new applications, is obviously a very Latin American thing, new applications in energy. However, as I said, there were only two applications from Latin America. Now, that's the reason why I need your advice. What's to be done to promote the prize? I repeat, of 540,000 US dollars in Latin America. What should I say to Latin Americans? What energy sectors would you say are the star sectors here? The energy is vital, not only from the economic point of view, but also from the environmental and strategic point of view for a country like Uruguay. And for your ALADI, the Latin American Integration Association, we're talking about it. But ALADI has its different expressions, which are not necessarily a genuinely integrated vision. Neither is energy. You take Mercosur, none of the dams built between the Mercosur countries, Itaipu, Yasarita, Salto Grande. To make people understand, we're talking about the Paraguayan-Brazilian, Paraguayan-Argentinian and Uruguayan-Argentinian borders. None of these hydroelectric dams are authorized to export energy to a third Mercosur country. That shows... For political or technical reasons? More political reasons than technical ones. I was Minister of Energy. There is the entire energy transmission system, which obviously runs through all these dams. In addition, there is also interconnection, which in the case of Brazil has different energy. We have 220, Brazil 110. As in the United States. That means that the integration has a huge must. But in addition, in energy matters, there is the nuclear issue, where Argentina and Brazil have a small percentage. More Argentina found it at the beginnings of Peron's energy policy than Brazil. But they do not abandon those projects that are between 5 and 10 percent of the energy matrix. Uruguay does not have it because that was a political decision that President Vasquez made at the time, despite the opinion that some of us had that perhaps it would be worth it. Not only because of the clean, beyond the dangerous, because here in Uruguay, even if we do not have a nuclear plant, any problem that happens in the Argentine plants could affect us. But the big issue in general is the energy that the citizen looks at based on cost. But it doesn't look at it in what its contribution to a better lifestyle is. Even in public policy, energy is not an element that makes a difference. I give you a very interesting technical example in terms of the price issue. The fashionable recipe now is to take energy from the air, sun, wind and apply this electricity by the process of electrolysis to produce hydrogen. You burn hydrogen, you don't produce CO2, all very nice. The problem is that a ton of the green hydrogen produced like this costs 3 to 6.5 times more compared to a ton of hydrogen produced from natural gas. Now, in Europe, North America, the government comes to the population and, with difficulties, but manages to convince the population that it is worth paying more because this means a cleaner world. Does this apply to the developing world? It's not necessarily the issue of cost, but it is not the source of energy, because it is not an element of decision, let's say, qualified, elaborated. This is like the strategy in trade policy. There are some instruments that are being applied. If Latin America existed as a homogeneous expression, a topic we can discuss at another time, there are more statists than statesmen. Statists not in the ideological sense, in the sense that the state, government or power is a short-term expression. And the statesman is sometimes not in a position to look a little further because he is much more limited in the electoral conjuncture. On the energy issue, that happens, and it happens in integration. There is something I would like to share. I was Minister of Energy. We promoted the gas pipeline that was built. A gas pipeline through which 10,000 cubic meters per day would pass from Buenos Aires, Argentina. And that pipeline was built and never worked. I inaugurated it with the Argentine president, being minister with the Uruguayan president. 
And why didn't it work? It didn't work because Argentina went into a huge energy crisis, an internal problem with foreign investors, and because gas ends up being an element that did not privilege integration. The non-compliance was more serious with Chile than with Uruguay. Not to mention Chavez's project for a gas pipeline from Venezuela to southern Latin America. Latin Americans, who we say we are integrators, who tear up in front of our heroes and our anthems, when it comes to showing solidarity, we are selfish. Because there is a need or because there are certain atavisms or different cultures. Brazilian culture, the coming of the court, the monarchy in 1808, or what Mexico is because of its geographical location. All of those things naturally make us different. Neither better nor worse. It makes us recite a kind of song that remains exclusively in music. I'm not saying we can't move forward, but I'm saying we move much less than we want. Secretary General, I did not expect to hear something like that at the headquarters of the Latin American Integration Association. I'm optimistic, but I'm also realistic. I am also an optimist, but quite well informed, so I lean towards certain pessimism. But I don't want to sink into the waters of the 19th century Panama Congress now. That's where all the common music began, but with different lyrics. Let's take a look from the point of view of a young scientist who has ideas and wants to change the life of his community, perhaps rural, and who could apply for the Global Energy Award. And in that sense, I will be selfish. What advice you have, how can we say to our potential partners, Latin America, you have that idea, why do you not participate in applications or at least in the dialogue that we have within the framework of our conferences, etc.? What should attract the attention of an association like ours in the countries of your association? To organizations, to institutions, to research institutes, to young people and professionals, I would say to have a medium-term vision, that they could read the new geopolitical map, that they knew what we are talking about when we talk about Gazprom, for example. Are we talking about, when we talk about fracking, that we are talking about dead cow? Neoken in Argentina. In that scheme, knowing what we are talking about, of what is a public policy, of what is welfare, and it is not so much the distributive, but the quality of life. And that's what I would look for. Where, in what institution, what young people, what students or what project, even within the government itself, if they existed, could have that kind of vision. Here we are. Here we are. No one here is saying how long the car's dependence on oil will last. Nobody is saying, look at this, how the technology is going, and how even the strategies are going. The gas might be different in itself, but petroleum is going to have its disputes, and also this CO2, the discussion even of methane itself. You are burning wood here. We can discuss that one day, because there is a huge scientific discussion. All this needs studies, but it also needs vision. Vision not only of national politics. I am from Aladi. I am part of an international organization. Uruguay has three and a half million inhabitants. As someone said, being Uruguayan is not a condition, it is a profession. Inevitability. Exactly. Inevitability. Metal Ferrer. All of that makes it easier for us to annoy an intelligence, the ability to think independently. Once I had the honor of presiding over the G80T international round, a minister in Morocco told me, the Uruguayans, how strange, so small and always making noise. But here then you have to look for an institution, either the University of the Republic or another institute, the LATU, for example. Institutions that know how to make noise with annoying intelligence. And so, with your permission, I advise our potential postulators to consider what has been said, to apply despite or thanks to what's being done, and I invite you to participate also in our autumn, your spring, in the forum Russia and the Better America in the Globalizing World, online at the University of St. Petersburg. There, we will also develop the topic of applications. Gladly. Thank you very much.